Alrighty, good morning. It is a Thursday morning. The fog is back. Temperatures inland are going to be mild to warm. We're going to see some low 80s today, even tomorrow. A little bit of wind on the weekend, cools off on Saturday. Tries to warm a little on Sunday, but subtle variations in Bay Area and California weather for the most part. The thing that's not subtle, never is this time of year, is the coastal fog. It's back. Uh, that's what happens when high pressure, right? The inversion gets 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 in, in place and high pressure builds in. And that's what we've got. We've got, let's take a look at the loop here. This is from Mount Tamalpais. This is, let's do the last hour. Uh, this is a little earlier this morning. This is like eight o'clock in the morning. You can see the fog filtering in. That's just a, it's just a feedback loop, right? The fog film comes in, the surface winds blow over the water. You get the upwelling, the water gets colder, more fog is created gets warmer in the valleys today, fresh or thermal gradient, you know, it becomes stronger each day. It's a feedback loop, upwelling, hotter in the valley, and then eventually it equals out. And that basically is going to be on Saturday when temperatures come back down a little bit, and then they'll come back up on uh, Sunday, Monday, and into Tuesday. But it'll be breezy this weekend. So a beautiful shot from uh, Mount Tam. And you can see Mill Valley down the, the kind of, well, you can't really, see, can you see it? Kind of see it right down in here. And then you see this is sort of um, out towards, I guess it's Mountain Home. Is that Mountain Home? I think so. It's a little fun little restaurant right on uh, Highway 1 there that looks back over the East Bay. Okay, so that is where we are this morning. That is the kind of the hits, runs, and errors. This is, uh, or these are, I hope you can see these okay. These are the forecast numbers for today. So 73 in Garberville, 79 in Redding. Chico's be 81, 81 in Sacramento. And you kind of just, you see the temperature footprint, right? For the most part. And obviously Southern California, 77 in Los Angeles today. Uh, that's 54 in Santa Barbara. Hmm. Not sure what we got going on there. I guess that's just straight up coastal fog, but I'm not sure that that seems a little low. I'd say 57 or 58, 59. So along the coast, you see the temperatures have cooled dramatically. And that is because of the coastal sec, uh, the, the marine layer coming back. Uh, out towards Vegas, you're up in the upper 90s, low 100s, really hot in the desert southwest. And then out towards Nevada, low 80s. So really nice. It's spring. It feels like spring. It's acting like spring. So I'm going, I'm actually taking off, where am I going? I'm going down to see dad today, 98 years old. He's in Santa Cruz, might jump in the water there. And then heading down to some spots, to, there's some little swell coming in from a good direction. So I'm heading down to some spots a little further south of here. So I'll probably be off the grid for a couple of days anyway, but uh, you'll be fine. You know how to use do this stuff. Okay, so here's the satellite loop or satellite picture. Here's some cool, relatively colder air. You can see it's not super cold because it's kind of dull white. This is the infrared. Colder the, the cloud top, the, cl the wider the cloud tops, the colder it is. So it tells you it's higher. So the darker the cloud tops, the warmer it is. I mean, it's still, it's all relative, right? Uh, what do you see? From the infrared, you just see this next system. This is basically the mechanism that begins the cooling on Saturday. Uh, but today, Thursday, Friday, tomorrow, look pretty pretty darn good. We can take a look at, <coughs> excuse me, wow. We can take a look at the visible satellite now. This is um, a little bit earlier, so what you're seeing is it's kind of dark out here, right? And then you a little light, you can see out here it's a little lighter. It's because of the sun, sun angle, and the sun's coming up, and visible satellite, right? It's just a picture. Uh, what you can't see, we can kind of see these whiter clouds are actually higher clouds not really picking out the fog very well. You can kind of see a little fog down here. And again, you can't see the snow in the Sierra Nevada, but you can, but barely. So it's gonna be a beautiful day for the most part. I think I've got this profiler here for you. Yeah, um, I, this, and don't be overly overwhelmed by this, but it t time runs from, this is the, the hardest part about this, is it runs from right to left. So this arrow, right, where, that's right now. So the inversion is, there was no inversion. See that back here around, you know, 10 hours ago, the inversion was really shallow. The, or the inversion was essentially non-existent, right? And then you see all of a sudden this cold air starts to filter in in the last 10 hours or so. And that cold air filtering in stretched out the inversion all the way up to 1,000 feet this was late last night, early this morning. And then it's pinched back down again 
And now as we go to current time, it's come back up. So that's the depth of the marine layer. So what's it tell us? Well, it tells us the fog is back. It tells us this time that the very dense marine layer along the coast, indicating probably poor visibilities, maybe even a little bit of drizzle, and then a slackening of the, the inversion. And actually, maybe in response to that low that's coming in, the inversion is weakening, and so it's stretching out. So the blue line, let's just use the blue line as the inversion, right? Because everything above it is warmer. Right, so we know that we've talked about that, right? Okay, so I know, we'll look at that. This, that's a, a key player in our spring and summer is the, the acoustic profiler out of Fort Ord. So we'll, we'll look at that some more. I'm moving pretty good today because I am like heading down the coast and it'd be fun to see dad. What else going on? Kind of fun, I, yeah, last couple of days I've been out, oh, the GFS model, by the way. Last couple of days I've been out, probably where you live too, but the spring is just sprung and it's gonna to continue to spring right through the next couple of days. In other words, it's gonna be 80s, 70s, 80s, and that's just flowers are popping, bees are buzzing, birds are mating, it's awesome. So enjoy it while it lasts. Hay fevers are popping as well. Um, and. I will get to the hay fever stuff in a minute. Well, let's talk about the model, the GFS. There's a little tweak to the north, no big deal. The dash lines aren't moving much. You notice that? Dash lines representing thickness. They come down a teeny bit as we go into tomorrow or this afternoon, but that's more of a marine layer thing. And then they kind of cool off a little bit on Saturday. See the drop in there? And the winds, the isobars, the lines, black lines, are closer together and so you see some breeze and you see the isotherms or the thickness is dropping a little bit this is on saturday afternoon and then they come back up the, the dash lines subtle it's so subtle that's like this isn't the best example but what you i guess what i what i the thing to take away the first thing i when i looked the first thing i did when i looked at this i go oh look at the black lines the isobars how close together they are so it's gonna be breezy starting well this afternoon well, pardon me, tomorrow afternoon. And it's going to kind of cool us off on Saturday and then the wind's gonna die down a little bit on Sunday afternoon. So breezy weekend, it's spring. Uh, and that's that's the GFS. And no, let's go looking for rain, even though, let's see if we got, eh, well, that looks interesting. So that's somewhere around the 19th. Let's see if that happens. That's a ways off. Um, We'll see. And we, I don't want to do that to you. I was gonna, if I wasn't rushing, I'd show you the isotherms. Um, these are the isotherms, actually. I'm going to show them to you. This is the forecast for today. And then that's Friday afternoon. Just look at the colors. And then I hope you can see, I'll put a circle around California. And then here's tomorrow, a little bit cooler, right? Friday. And then here is Saturday. Saturday's a little bit cooler. So it's very subtle changes. Cooler, breezier on Saturday, but very subtle changes. And then temperatures go right it's right up again. See how they keep popping during the afternoon, those reds? I know, it's not, it's not a granular map at all, but it's a good map to look at for trends. Okay, so here's the overall picture. I'll put the jet stream in just because we can see what we're dealing with. Kind of like this, right? That would be the upper level jet stream. Big ridge of high pressure here trough here and that's how this goes uh, the next couple of days some very cool air moving into the mississippi valley where they've had flooding that flooding has backed off a lot although you still have the flood concerns right because it's like we said the um all that rain over a week ago is continuing to drain down the mist it's a big drainage basin so it's it's like a slow moving disaster and if you turn on Weather Channel or the network news, they're showing all sorts of flooding stuff. And you're like, oh, there's, there's, it's sunny out. Well, it's, it's because the rain, the damage has been done. Fire danger here in the Dakotas and in parts of um, oh, Nebraska and Oklahoma, and not quite to Oklahoma, but Kansas. And then some, looks like fog issues there. Just quiet, pretty quiet across the country today. The, I'm moving pretty good, aren't I? I know. And then this is tomorrow's forecast. So I hope you got good plans. Today's Thursday. The only thing I've noticed, now we've kind of done weather, is how, like I wouldn't be rushing, but how much um, traffic, <clears throat> oh wow, the fog came in at Sutro. How much, tra that's Sutro Tower, so that's the fog. How much traffic has um, changed since in the last year or two? Like how busy it is all 
you know, this is the Bay Area, probably LA as well. But it's just like, it used to be rush hour, you know, or three to seven in the afternoon. Now it's kind of all day. Because I think it's the function of flexible schedules. I've, I've read this a few in a few places, which is fine. Got some good comments on um, radio towers. Thank you for for the knowledge. And a lot of radio stuff's interesting, man. Radio waves, the whole thing. And a uh, nice guy chiming in. He goes, uh, Wolfman Jack was in uh, Chula Vista was his station. But the reason he was able to have such a blowtorch signal, huge, you know, watts, was because he had his tower was in Mexico. So there was no FCC for that. So he was just blasting. It was really awesome. Um, if you remember, you remember. And if you don't, you're young and happy and you don't, you probably <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. This is part of the Delta. Some high clouds, beautiful day. Allergies will be noticeable today. Santa Barbara. Hmm, no fog. I thought there would be a little fog down there. I think there will be. I think there is a little fog showing up right around um, Campus Point. We will uh, probably see more of that develop as we go into this evening. This is, oh, that's San Diego, and a little deeper on the inversion, huh? Remember yesterday we looked at it in the fog? Same picture. Fog was, you could see more of the hillside. So that's a deeper inversion down south a little bit. Looks pea soupy for sure. This is the time of year where the fog gets going at the coast and it's getting going and it's gonna be around. The wind, will, the wind on Saturday, Friday night into Saturday, I think will kind of probably tear up the marine layer a little bit, especially in Northern California. Um, I don't know about Southern California, but the fog, the fog is gonna be a kind of a back and forth the next few days. This is Mount Shasta trying to form a lenticular cloud. We know how they're formed. There's one right there, right? And that's coming off, of, that's like a lee wave. That's coming off the mountains to the north, I would suspect. Um, but it's breezy on top. And you'll probably, if we were, if you were to go back to this picture, Mount Shasta in four hours, you'd probably see some pretty good lenticular. A check on the mountains, a little breezy out on the lake, not horribly. And again, good snow in the mountains. Over 100% of snowfall. It, we average out over, we're, we're right where we should be for Northern and Southern California if you average the two indexes together. So that's good news. Um, live picture, right now it's 45 degrees down at the lodge at Heavenly Valley. That's 45 degrees, it's pretty warm for the morning. This is Ocean Beach, San Francisco. Uh, and just kind of squirrely looking, right? This is spring and it's been a run. I mean, you guys out in the avenues, it has been a run of really nice weather. Uh, and now the fog is back and it's still nice. Years ago when I started out in this business, I kind of said, oh, you're, I'll bet you're happy, you know, kind of on TV. I said, oh, I bet it's, you're happy if you live in Pacifica. The fog is, is gone and sun is out. And people wrote and they go, dude, we moved here because we love the fog. And that's one of the things I, one of the things I learned. Because I always thought fog was like, eee. You know, when you're a little kid, you just want to go to the beach, want to be sunny. And I go, no, dude, we, we moved here because we love the fog. And I have learned to love the fog. But it does get this weird, you know, what's funny about the fog is, at least for me, is it really changed? I think because the ocean turns brown, dark like this, the, the shadow. Um, the, the ocean is very different looking in the sun. <laughs> this is kind of like, I wouldn't say, it's just, you know, it's, it's moody. Okay, that's moody, right? And if I showed you yesterday's picture, you go, that's not moody. That's just sunny. Okay, Pacifica, a little moody today. This young man out enjoying the beach, mom and dad doing the right thing, getting them out. And not much to see here, except that inversion. We know it deepened out a little bit and then shallowed. So that means it sticks right along the coast. Santa Cruz, you can see the fog in there. And what can we see there? Yeah, just a beautiful day. Well, you know, beautiful. Oh, I know what you can see. Because it faces, it's an interesting spot. I don't know if I can do this, I'll try. But so you're, you're facing, right now this camera is facing kind of west. So kind of almost southwest. So Monterey is actually kind of down here. You can't see it right now, but you can see the area trying to clear. You can see a little sun coming through. Then we've got, let's see where our last slide picture is. And we go to, oh, this is an interesting spot. This is Sand Spit. This is in Santa Barbara. This is the harbor down by Brophy's. And this wave, when it's, when it's just, well, first of all, you see fog, see some high clouds. Remember I pointed from La Conchita North, I said, oh, I think there's fog up there. That's, that's where we are now. We're looking at, we're in the fog a little bit. It's State Street, 
the pier. The pier is right behind over here. But this wave, when it gets big, so this wave right now, this wave is facing, dude, I think it's almost facing southeast, right? Because the cove turns and then this little bay turns even more. So when the swell gets giant and, and hits the right direction and gets between the islands, you get it, it comes in and it bends around this point like nobody's business. It's got to be big, but it turns into, they call it sand spit. Um, it breaks, I, I'll bet it doesn't break more than once, once or twice a year, break really, or I'll bet it doesn't break really good except maybe once every couple of years. But when it does, it's just, it looks like Kelly's wave pool. It's just this, I've never surfed, I've surfed it on a longboard messing around at the point here. But when it turns this corner, because that's all this manicured harbor sand. And so it just gets super awesome sand spit. I saw, a, well, I won't go into that. Okay, here, is, uh, the, here are the eagles. They're active this morning. Beautiful morning for them. I'm glad they're up and about. Um, looks like a nice day out on, the, on, the, on Big Bear Lake. These are the Big Bear Eagles. And they are not, we are not that far from having, I mean, they're, they're, I think they stay in the nest 10 to 13 weeks. Look at them looking around. I love it when they, um, they get their down in too, which is encouraging. We talk about that, but, but when they, now that they have that down, they can kind of regulate their temperature a little better. So when it, if it does get cold again, they're not going to be getting all jacked around. And I think that's it. That's it. Yeah, we did it. Okay, it's going to be a good day. I'm going to be kind of AWOL for a couple of days. I'll try to, if there's something goes on, I'll fill in. But I think it's pretty much steady as she goes. Uh, warm day today. Let's go back. We'll look at the temperatures. Can I do that? Um, warm day today. No, I'm not going to do it. I'll get the birds. A warm day today. Warm day tomorrow. Windier on Saturday. Cools off a little bit, but spring-like cooling. And then more starts to warm back up early next week. Okay, see you back here.